In this presentation, we'll present paper 25, Structural Upcycling, Matching Digital and Natural Geometry. First, we'll introduce the three speakers who are authors of the paper. Hi, I'm Professor Caitlin Mueller, and I'm faculty at MIT in the departments of Architecture and Civil and Environmental Engineering, and I lead the Digital Structures Research Group. Hello, everyone. My name is Yi Jiang Huang. I'm a PhD student at the Building Technology Program at MIT, working with Professor Caitlin Mueller. Hello, everyone. I'm Felix Amtsberg. I'm a postdoc at DICD at the University of Stuttgart, and I did this research as part of my SUTD MIT postdoctoral research at the MIT with Professor Caitlin Müller. This research reconsiders the standardization of building materials that characterize their use in the 20th century and asks, given the challenges that we face today and also the opportunities that have emerged thanks to digital tools and technologies, can we do better? Can we design material systems that are responsive to locally available resources and that reflect the diversity and expressiveness of both design intent and performance? We take inspiration in particular from timber because this is a very interesting material system that comes from geometrically irregular organic stock from trees, but is typically processed in such a way to create standardized elements. This process results in a large amount of waste, you, most of which are the geometrically irregular parts of trees, which nevertheless have a lot of potential as um, well-oriented fibers that create geometrically interesting forms. We're especially interested in waste in urban contexts. So for example, in the city of Somerville, which is near our campus at MIT, urban street trees are regularly felled and chipped into landscaping mulch due to construction or invasive species. This mulch decays rapidly and releases carbon emissions, but there are alternative ways that we could reuse these, these waste tree materials in productive structural configurations to sequester carbon and take inspiration from locally available geometries. Our research aims to find structural forms that respond to these available materials, in this case tree branches that are used as moment connections in a grid shell, and develop computational methods that allow us to do this quickly and agilely in response to variable material stocks. Our research takes inspiration from recent work that has advanced the field and also from historical examples that have demonstrated this approach centuries ago. What distinguishes our work in both areas is um, a focus on the structural potential of these materials and their ability to transfer load as cantilevering moment connections in trees and as moment connections in structures, our algorithmic approach, which is novel and very fast, and our approach to fabrication, which we believe is simple and scalable. We start with materials that have been donated by our our partners, the city of Somerville, which have come from a variety of sites where trees are being taken down and represent a much more diverse range of timber species than are typically dealt with structurally. Our process digitally scans these materials using low-cost 3D scanners and turns them into a digital library that can be used in computational design. Our one of the keys of our method is identifying um, a geometry representation that is simple enough to be used in mathematical models. We choose a vectorial representation in which the skeleton um, lines of the tree branches are captured through after this 3D scanning process, and the diameters of the, of the various tree branches are re represented abstractly. This allows us to represent the key structural salient principles while working in a lightweight fashion with our algorithmic design. On the left, we see the key principle in timber engineering that guides our work, Hankinson's equation, which shows that the mechanical properties of timber are not degraded um, if timber grains are, lo are loaded in angles only slightly deviating from fibers. This means that if we use tree branches in structural connections where the loads are slightly mismatched with a fiber orientation, we will still be able to use them structurally, but large mismatches can be problematic. We account for this in the matching score that we'll discuss um, in the next section. Um, and using a matching score, we're able to then morph or optimize the geometry globally so that the overall matching of material in our inventory to um, targets in our design can be maximized. And you see here that our process um, finds new global forms that respond um, as, as well as possible to the available materials. So after we're settled on the geometric representation of a given design node, 
Now we have to think about how to quantify the mismatch between a given design node and a tree fork so that later, based on this metric, we can optimize the overall matching score. The way we compute the mismatching metric between the two given pair of shapes is as follows. So we first perform a shape registration to pull these two shapes in a very close uh, co configuration. And this shape registration is performed by using the classic iterative closest point algorithm proposed by Basil and McKay in 1992. Notice that uh, we're using a simplified version of the ICP algorithm because we're we are using this vectoral representation and we only have two given uh, two fixed uh, set of points in the two shapes. And of course, we only need to perform a few corresponding iterations within the ICP algorithm. So after the shapes are registered together, we can simply define the mismatching metric as a summation of the distance between the corresponding points in the, in the registered shapes. In this particular case, for example, we can, we can define the, the mismatching metric as the summation over the distance between u1 and v3, u3 and v2, and u2 and v1. And we use this number to characterize the geometric mismatching between these two shapes. And we can perform the same computation for each single pair of design node and tree forks in the inventory and compile each each one of those mismatching score into a distance matrix where all of the geometric information that we care about in these problems is encoded in. And finally, we can formulate our optimal matching problem as follows. We're looking for a one-to-one -one assignment from the set of design nodes into the set of tree forks in the inventory such that the overall mismatching score is minimized. You might have already noticed that this is a particular instance of the linear assignment problem, a very classic and well-studied problem in the combinatorial optimization problem, uh, literature. And for this specific problem, we have very efficient algorithm that can solve the problem in polynomial time, aka very efficiently. In this work, we use a Hungarian algorithm proposed by Kuhn in 1955 which is also known as the moncrief kuhn assignment uh, algorithm. And we use this algorithm to solve the op optimal matching problem very efficiently. As the last cornerstone of our research, I would like to present the development of the node geometry to you. It was of special importance for this project that we would not have to trade a material efficiency for labor intense and therefore inefficient fabrication processes. The node concept is based on the logic of a convex hull, filling the scanned brand structure. The convex hull represents the smallest convex structure to covered contact faces. Therefore, only acute and obtuse angles appear and generate a triangulated node, which can be produced without any undercuts. Simple straight cutting sequences produce this node with 15 to 25 cuts. This shape is ideal for quick cutting sequences and time-saving production of complex one-off components. Starting with the digital twin of the crotch geometry, we identify the pith in the center of the crotch and calculate the vectors of the branches. Based on this input and the structural analysis of the intended structure, the planes and required section geometry are defined, which then grow until the reached boundaries of the crotch geometry. The corner points of the final position of the sections are used to generate the convex hull. Before finally, the cutting sequence and toolpath for the robotic fabrication is generated. Thanks to the support of the staff during our residency at Autodesk Build Space in Boston, we were able to set up our 48 old bandsaw in front of the industrial robot. As you can see in this example, the fabrication of the scrolls was done with a simple toolpath generation in about 13 minutes. With a more stable setup, higher feed rates could be achieved. However, the result, especially of the contact phases, were highly accurate, requesting no further processing. Another benefit of this concept lies in the compensation of the deviations between the vectors of the crotch library, the red line, 
and the intended geometry in the dashed line. This small deviation between design structure and crotch available can easily be compensated by the convex hull geometry generated by the three contact faces between node and bar. We found a partner with the Summerville Community Growing Center, which was under renovation, presenting us this old pergola. And several trees which were felled during the renovation, providing us with a material library and the opportunity to rebuild the structure using the material from the construction site and existing foundations and columns to renovate it with a new roof. We designed a mock-up using eight crotches with a valency of three, and four crotches with a valency of four and produce them using our setup to erect the structure at MIT and test our building system. Without any doubt, one of the major challenges of the 21st century is the development of resource efficient building concepts. With building industry as a major contributor of over 30% of greenhouse gases, 40% energy and global resource consumption and almost 50% of global waste, radical new approaches will have to be invented and used to reduce carbon emissions and reach the crucial climate goals. We hope this approach shows new perspectives on how digital tools can lead to more sustainable solutions, merging material and fabrication in thorough design concepts. Thank you for your attention.